Big East basketball is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Jeep, there's only one. About 10 inches of snow has already fallen in Milwaukee in Pfizer form, but it's nice and toasty inside as we get you set for some Big East college hoops. St. John's and Marquette. Brandon Gordon, Nick Bob, pleased to be with you from Milwaukee. Big East standings, both teams four and six, trying to climb that ladder towards undefeated Villanova. And Nick, we are going to see two of the most talented freshmen in this conference, Posh Alexander and Dawson Garcia. Yeah, Posh Alexander, incredible on-ball defender, and he's the heart and soul of this St. John's team, and he's playing his best basketball of the season. He can dominate a game without scoring, but the scary thing is he's been scoring the ball efficiently, 17 points per game in his last three. And then Dawson Garcia, the McDonald's All-American, he's slowed down a little bit of late, just four points per game in his last two games. He's got to be more aggressive to score the basketball. And speaking of scoring the basketball, Julian Champagny, man, has he been good. He's got a great combination of athleticism, size, and shooting. At six foot eight, he can shoot over the top of the defense. He's been awesome. And before we get going, it is not too late to enter the Fox Super 6 College Hoops Contest for a chance to win a $1,000 prize. Download the free app, answer six questions about the St. John's Marquette game for your chance to win. All right, let's get you the lineup sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee for St. John's. They are still without Greg Williams, who averages 11 points a game, his third straight game missing with a lower back injury. So that is a big miss for Mike Anderson. He will watch from the sidelines. Meanwhile, for Marquette, they are going to be without Justin Lewis, who gives them almost nine points a game off the bench. He has a sore ankle, so big misses, Nick, for both of these teams. No doubt about it, and in different areas, Greg Williams provides some veteran leadership in scoring, and Lewis had a big game against St. John's a couple of weeks ago in New York City, scoring 13 points off the bench, so you're going to have to have some different guys step up. These two teams just met on January 16th in Queens. Marquette went against 73-71. St. John's had a couple of opportunities, one at the buzzer by Champagny, couldn't knock it down, and the Golden Eagles got the victory. And 16 seconds in, we've got an early foul underneath. And Posh Alexander got switched on to Theo John. And Alexander's a great defender, but he's not ready to battle Theo John in the post. And you know, Steve Wojciechowski told us that this guy right here has got to be more aggressive to get rolling. That's a good sign if you're Marquette Garcia knocking down a triple. Nick, you mentioned it last two games, eight points total, just three of 11 from the floor for Garcia. But a wonderful start, three to nothing. I just think Garcia's allowed teams to take him away. All of a sudden, he's at the top of the scouting report. you got to stay aggressive if you're Garcia. Way off the mark for Rasheem Dunn, the redshirt senior guard. Now, this game was supposed to be February 20th, but COVID shuffled in the Big East this last week, and so things reorganized, travel plans changed, and here we go with a rematch today. Theo John imposing his way. He's got that big body, 6'9", 250. Well, and if St. John's isn't going to come with a double team, Brandon, that's where the ball's got to go. A great pressure release for teams that pressure the ball is throwing it into the post. So a steady diet of Theo John is a good place to go for the Golden Eagles. So a good start for Marquette, who has struggled to get off to good starts in their last couple of games as Champagny settles down St. John's with their first bucket. See, I think Champagny's got a distinct advantage with Garcia guarding him. I think he's the more mobile player. He can drag Garcia away from the basket just like he did and knock down threes. Big East leading scores, Nick told you. Almost 20 a game for Champagny. There defensively, Vince Cole getting a hand to the cookie jar. Posh Alexander inside off the window. That's what St. John's does. They turn you over and they turn it into points. Good hands from Cole. And Alexander is really good at finishing when other teams make mistakes. And in that first meeting, they forced Marquette into 19 turnovers. They were plus eight in that category. Certainly something to keep an eye on. Yeah, they say styles make fights. Well, one of the biggest issues Marquette's been taking care of the basketball, and that spells bad news because St. John's turns you over at a high rate. Right down the lane, goaltending. Hit the backboard first, then John got a hand on it. So a little 7-0 spurt here for St. John's. Mike Anderson, second year here, 19 seasons overall. Last year, 
17 and 15, 5 and 13 in league play. St. John's much better, 4 and 6 right now. And Nick, they've been on a great run. They've won four of their last five and three straight. Yeah, I think it's all because this end of the floor has really started to click at all levels. Defensively, that's how this team's got to be built, and they've been tremendous. And when St. John's went on their run at the end of last season, it was really on the defensive end as well. It's the identity of the program. Good feed in sub, a point blank look, but Roberts couldn't get it to drop. Well, Theo John was hobbled at the other end of the floor, slow to get up. And he's been banged up. Take a look at it. Oh, yeah, that left ankle gave out on him a little bit. Take another look at, look at that left ankle, see where it turned out. He has been so snake bitten with injuries. Early December, he had a knee injury, landed funny in practice. No structural damage, but Steve Wojciechowski said he's still not normal from that knee injury, and the only thing that will heal it is rest, but right now they're not getting any rest. And that's, that's the tough part about this time of year. You have those nagging injuries, but you've got to find a way to fight through it. See how that ankle and knee holds here as he backs down Roberts. Missed it. Offensive rebound. Garcia will head to the line. Steve Wojciechowski in that two-game losing streak said, hey, we, we've got to get off to a better start. And Nick said they also have to shoot the ball better. They've been under 30% from deep the last six games. And it sounds like an excuse or a cliche that, you know, basketball can be a make-or-miss sport, but that's just kind of the reality of the situation. Marquette's gotten decent shots from three that just haven't knocked them down. And with this matchup in particular, I like what he told us. Against St. John's, you're going to have a hard time running plays. you got to go make plays. And so far, the best source of playmaking has been playing through the post with Garcia and Theo John. Garcia five early and number five, Greg Elliott. He's been on a nice run the last three games, averaging nine a contest. Checks in for Jamal Kane. Elliott had 13 points on the road at St. John's in their win in New York City. Excellent three-point shooter that can create space for the other Golden Eagles. Baseline drive, Vince Cole, and he reaches down towards his lower leg. Try to walk it off. The junior Juco transfer from Charleston, South Carolina. This goal can score it. And you know, sometimes... Brandon, I take junior college numbers with a grain of salt. But the thing that I like about Vince Cole's number from junior college is he averaged 21 a game, but he shot 50% from the floor, better than 40% from three, and he shot 90% from the free throw line. So when you're scoring at that level of efficiency, oftentimes that translates when you move up a level, and so far it has for Mike Anderson. And Vince Cole, team high 18 against DePaul in a season high 34 minutes. And he makes it a 9-7 ball game in favor of the Red Storm. And I think it's important for pressing teams to get to the free throw line so you can really set your pressure. And so far, Marquette's handled the ball, handled the press pretty well. Off balance, look, no good for DJ Carton. There's Garcia again. And he gets fouled by Roberts. So early on, Darson Garcia, who Coach Wojciechowski told us, we got to get more out of the freshman. He's giving him quite a boost here in the first almost four minutes. Well, what I like is he's got three offensive rebounds. Sometimes you got to go get yourself going. I think that's one of the interesting things in watching him play, where he, he, his offense has slowed down, and I just don't think he's been in a, as aggressive. And sometimes you've got to manufacture your own rhythm, running the floor, getting in the passing lane, or in his case, getting to the offensive glass. And that two-game stretch is worst of the season against DePaul and Providence. The other thing that Steve Wojciechowski said is opponents are making it really tough on him. He is high on the scouting report. No doubt about it. you got some pretty talented coaches going through film and figuring out your pet moves and your pet plays. And you know, the great ones always have a counter to that. And I think Dawson Garcia has it. Trying to go over the top of the zone, but too tall for Julian Champagny. Brandon, I think zone is something that could serve Marquette well here this afternoon. St. John struggled against the zone on the road at Xavier. And so I think if you're Steve Wojciechowski, mixing it up, throwing some 2-3 at the Red Storm is a good idea. 
Marquette hit their first two shots. They missed their last five. E.J. Clark, the Ohio State transfer. Here he is, curling it down to John. Up top, catch and release, triple, short out of the hand of Kobe McEwen. Battle for the board, and St. John's comes away with it. Well, Cole had all day to think about it, takes a dribble right into rhythm, and it's 12-9 St. John's. From a tempo standpoint, St. John's plays faster than any team in the Big East, and they are going to be aggressive to hunt shots early in possession, so you've got to get sorted out. And there you go. Sets up the press. Posh Alexander leads the Big East in steals, and he gets another one there. And Kobe McEwen needed to run the baseline just like this, improve your passing angle. But a good job from St. John's. You see how quick it can happen. They can get deflections and turn it into points. Posh Alexander guarding the ball now. 44 steals now on the season. Such a disruptive force. Garcia. And the rebound coming down into the hands of Champagny. So a good start for St. John's, and it continues. Champagny, his second three, and it's an eight-point lead. And this is what St. John's can do. They start to get their rhythm and flow, and they can put points on you in bunches. An 8-0 run, St. John's three of four from outside the arc. Theo John, he's had a lot of deep post touches, but great defense. Roberts rejects it. John, the second time, forces his way up. And when we get back, we'll be at the line. Now, St. John's showing you what they can do defensively. Posh Alexander leads the Big East in steals. Tips one, gets a bucket. And how about the Big East leading score? A little pick and pop. Fox College Hoops is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, and motorcycle insurance. You might need some in this weather. Almost a foot of snow has fallen outside. St. John's, though, a great start on the road with a 17-9 lead under the guidance of Mike Anderson. I mentioned it's his second year with the Red Storm, 19 years as a Division I head coach. Of course, a disciple, a pupil of Nolan Richardson, but I don't think people appreciate all that he's done, nine NCAA tournament appearances, Nick, and all 18 of his seasons, now 19, have been above 500. It's incredible. And you know, to me, the fact that he's done it at multiple places is what's really impressive. UAB, Missouri, Arkansas, now St. John's. And I attribute a lot of his success to the fact that he has a crystal clear understanding of what he's trying to do from building a program standpoint and building it defensively. And look at this list. I don't think many people would realize Mike Anderson is on that list with few Izzo and Sean Miller. Well, again, and he, he's a guy that's done it at multiple spots. Not to take anything away from Mark View and Tom Izzo, but when you change locations in different parts of the country and you can still have success, that just really speaks volumes into how good of a coach he is. And I think he's going to be a great fit, a great fit in New York City. I think those New York City guards like Posh Alexander fit his style to a tee. It's a boy from Birmingham, Alabama, was Mike Anderson. Unfortunately, Josh Roberts on the bench, though, with two fouls. And that could be keys. Helps defend this guy at the line, Theo John. And this is where the absence of, of Justin Lewis is impactful, who's out today with an ankle injury. Sometimes when your starters are flat, you go to your bench to infuse some energy and some offense. Well, Lewis isn't available today. So the starters are going to have to kind of manufacture it themselves. Marquette, those free throws stopped an 8-0 run for St. John's. And the ball knocked out of bounds. And we'll head the other way. I'm telling you, Brandon, I think 2-3 zone is a good thing for Marquette. I think it can disjoint how St. John's wants to play. They want to drive the basketball. They have a lot of motion off the ball in terms of cutting and screening. I think it can force St. John's to stand a little bit. If I'm Steve Ojahowski, I'm going to that 2-3 zone early and often. Well, that's the thing, the tempo. St. John 17th in the nation and Marquette 253rd. Different styles. Yeah, and it's a good point to bring because zone naturally slows the game down too. Marquette doesn't have a field goal in the last five and a half minutes.
Kane fading, and there is their first field goal in over five and a half minutes. And what does Steve Wojcicki say? It's hard to run plays. You've got to go make plays. Well, Jamal Kane just went and made a play. Driving in the lane, a little fade away. Good play. Kane's a guy they need a better performance from than he had against Providence. A season low two points in only 20 minutes. That also a season low as Greg Elliott gets a hand on it with 11 to shoot. Well, when you're playing St. John's, there's not a lot of help defenders, so you're going to have real estate to operate. Watch as Kane's going to drive. He's got all that space. Rasheen Dunn not wanting to come and help because that's not how they're built defensively. So you're able to get, get these types of shots off. The question is, can you make them? And Kane with a nice little one-on-one -on -one play right there. One of the veterans, his 110th career game, Theo John, the only one that's played more in a Marquette uniform, 114. Open three, and another one drops down. Vince Cole from the wing. Great pass. Looking opposite. You hit the high post. You look to the opposite side of the floor. Textbook zone offense there from St. John's. Yeah, that's, I guess, how you shoot him out of the zone right there. Yeah. The reality is you're going to have to knock down some threes to bust that zone up a little bit. The Red Storm, four of five from D. Carton has it rejected. Vince Cole, he already has eight. Here he's kicking it out to a Daiwusu, and he cannot connect. Slow start for DJ Carton, and he misses the reverse. Lob toward the rim, two-handed flush. Isaiah Moore throwing it down. Boy, Steve Wojcicki wanted to goaltend. It was close, but man, Moore is athletic and can finish those lobs above the rim. That is impressive. And these St. John's guards got supreme confidence in putting it by the rim when Moore is patrolling it. Look at it up top and the Red Storm flushing. Well, that last play, Nick, they may have had a case for goaltending here. Take a look at it. Man, that's close. It looks like it hits the rim right before Moore is able to catch it and flush it. Ball probably in the cylinder, but in any event, it ends in two points. And how about these two guys, Brandon? The, the production the last two games far exceeds the previous five games. And you see that chemistry on the court. AAU, team, AAU teammates, they probably thrown each other a lob or two over the course <laughs> of their basketball careers. Yeah, and that time it was Moore feeding Cole. They played for the Upward Stars in South Carolina. Moore from Columbia, Cole from Charleston. Both went the JUCO route, and then both winding up playing for Mike Anderson at St. John's. And Mike Anderson's had a great history in his career of bringing in JUCO transfers and really growing them. And these two guys, the latest examples. These two have come in and fit the system perfectly so far. Marquette's got to get going here. Down nine. And Garcia, he's got the seven points, but the rest of the team only six, and there's an offensive foul. Jamal Kane going wild to the basket. Well, wild's a good descriptive term because that's what St. John's can get you to do, play a little bit faster than what you want to play and sometimes when you get sped up you can make poor decisions and get out of control and St. John's whether they're stealing the ball or taking charges will force turnovers. Speaking of pace, fast break points right now, 9-0 St. John's. And Marquette's got to slow this game down a little bit. The reality is they got to get stops. That, that pressure and that pace doesn't get routed up if they get stops but Haas Alexander knocking down a triple. What a player he is, the freshman from Brooklyn, four and a half assists, 11 points a game, almost four rebounds, and as we told you, leads the conference in steals. Well, he just sets the tone for, for this team from an energy standpoint, a defensive standpoint, and, and he can dominate a game without scoring, but the scary thing is he's starting to score the ball, Brandon. Yeah. Mike Anderson told him a few games ago, we need more from you offensively, and he'd already given him so much defensively and assisting, but he's really starting to pick it up, and St. John's coming into form. They got a 12-point lead here as we approach the 10-and-a-half-minute mark. Well, St. John's has gotten really high-quality shots this whole game. Good open looks from a variety of different guys. Hold there on Dylan Adai Wusu, the freshman from the Bronx. Thank you.
Garcia back again. He's been most of the offense, seven of the 13 points. And this ball's got to go inside. You got to find a way to get post ups for John and Garcia and play inside out. John's posting. He's got it. Here's the double. Kobe McEwen back down into John. Good look. The big fella left it short. It's a good possession, though. Steve Wojciechowski said, we're at our best. We're playing through the paint, whether it's via the post-up or the drive. Two good deep post touches for Theo John. He'll take that shot all game. Corner three, yes. Isaiah Moore, one of those junior college transfers, knocking it down. 28 to 13. It's an 11-0 run. St. John's Red Storm opening this up to a 15-point lead, forcing the Steve Wojciechowski timeout, and Marquette needs answers. You know, we talked about Nick possibly them looking inside more, but Theo John, while he's gotten good looks, hasn't been able to convert those good looks. Well, and when the double team comes, you got to have other Golden Eagles being aggressive out of the double team. I thought Marquette was far too passive once the ball got sprayed out of the post. But right now, St. John's is just red hot from beyond the arc. Six of nine from three. Well, you don't want to overreact to some of these triples of your Marquette. St. John's is getting wide open shots from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, Marquette, three of 15 from the floor, one for their last 13. Remember, they started two for two. John, power dribble. Well, the one thing he is doing is he's creating fouls on the other side. That's now 16 fouls on St. John's. That certainly is an area where Marquette can put their fingerprints on this game, get into the free throw line. Good drive and drop down from Jamal Kane and Theo John, you know, is going to be strong enough to go up through the contact. Seventy-one percent shooter. And he's made all three so far this afternoon. Again, you kind of just feel the absence of Justin Lewis. You know, Lewis, the freshman, can come in and score at a high clip for Marquette. And he's not available. He averages eight points per game. He had 13 on the road at St. John's, but he hurt his ankle in practice. There he is right there. No timetable on his return. And then Greg Williams still out for St. John's for the third consecutive game with a lower back injury. Step back three. And that one in and out. St. John's, though, those six triples, they only had seven against DePaul on Wednesday. Seven of 26. Use of the pivot foot. That was pretty by Kobe McEwen. That's why you land on two feet, because you got options. Off balance, wild shot on the other side from Erlington. John in the post again with a smaller champagne on it. He uses the pivot foot and does so effectively. It's a 5-0 run. I like the shots John has gotten when he's gotten touches into the post. Well, the biggest thing is that he's gotten deep post position every single time. Finally, you feel like Marquette, a little momentum, a little energy. Posh Alexander short on the fadeaway. Both of these teams, four and six in conference play, needing a win here this afternoon. Corner triple off the mark by Torrance, and we'll head the other way. Hey, look at Theo John. The biggest thing for him is where he catches the ball. Some guys can post up and back down like Luca Garza from 14, 15 feet and still score. Theo John's a proximity to the basket, kind of a post player. He wants to catch it deep, and when he does, he's pretty effective. And great on this end of the floor. Steve Wojciechowski said he doesn't get enough credit for being one of the best defenders, not only in the conference, but in the country. And number two all-time in Marquette history and block shots. But no one's blocking that one. Josh Roberts right to the rim, unabated. But John was guarding Roberts, and when, when he went for the block shot, someone's got to rotate and take away 
his man in terms of getting a free run at the rim. This guy's got to get going, Brandon. DJ Carton, he's got to stay more aggressive than what he's been. At the end of games, the last couple of games, he's put his foot on the gas, and Marquette's been so much more dangerous. Well, his teammate going to work there, second bucket inside for Kobe McEwen. Well, it may not be flashy, but a two-foot jump stop is so darn effective. And you've seen that twice now from penetration from Marquette. When they land on two feet, they can pivot their way to an open area. Champagny lost it, and he throws it away. And a one-handed hammer the other direction by Jamal Kane. 9-2 run, Golden Eagles back with an eight. Heck of an answer from the Golden Eagles. And a timeout taken by Mike Anderson. Well, Marquette needing to find some life and some energy, and sometimes you got to do it with the defense. Heck of a job by Jamal Kane getting in the lane, and he's clear for takeoff. Fox College Hoops, sponsored by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The snow continuing to fall, winter storm warning here in Milwaukee for the rest of the day. And Marquette trying to climb out of the early hole back within 8.30 to 22. Mike Anderson's got his team off to a 10 and 7 start this year. Four and six in league play, but that doesn't tell the full story as they've won four of their last five, three in a row, and carrying that momentum here today into five serve forum. But Marquette on this little run, they started three of 15, but heating up, Nick. They're four of their last five from the floor. And it started to dig in a little bit on this end of the floor. You know, getting some stops. That was the issue early on. Just far too easy of offense for St. John's. 9-2 run over the last three minutes. Vince Cole gets a little room on the baseline. A tough hanging finish. You see I slowed down right at the last second to just disjointed the timing from Theo John. So John jumped too soon because Cole was able to slam on the brakes a little bit to get it up off the window. That was nice. Ten first half points for Cole coming off that team high 18 and the win over DePaul this week. Top of the arc, Kobe McEwen can't find the range. Great bounce pass inside, but then a block recovering Garcia and John got hands on it. A lob the other direction and that falls right down into the lap of McEwen. He misses, but John does not. John doing it all. Heck of a block and then running the floor for the tip dunk. Now, there's no doubt John is hunting shots to block around the rim right now. And he's got nine points on the other end, and there's another dunk for Josh McRoberts. And then Kobe McEwen reaching towards his lower back. Again, John's coming to block shots, and you have to rotate if you're Marquette to try to take away those runs at the rim for Roberts. McEwen maybe moving a little gingerly out there, but staying on the floor. This is the guy you said that needs to get going earlier in games, DJ Carton, who averages 12.2 a contest. Here he feeds to the corner. Kane misses, but Theo John cleans it up. The reload. And Carton misses as well. Good shot, though. Good kick out from Theo John. Best time to shoot a three-pointer is off of an offensive rebound kick out because the defense is a little messy. See, I think Champagny can run Garcia off screens. Make him move a little bit. Pass taken away. Guess who? Posh Alexander, second steal. And he leaves it for an open look. Cole can't knock it down. Another offensive board. 
Rasheem Dunn out to Julian Champagny, and he has a bad miss as well, but the possession stays alive. And Posh Alexander, they're just going to say, lost that out of bounds. He was looking for a whistle. Well, Theo John is doing what he does best and blocking shots. He has really been aggressive, especially defensively. But you never want to assume the make. He runs the floor and gets the tip dunk. And Theo John's really, really done a nice job on both ends of the floor. Average is 7.6 points, already has nine. You mentioned second. They Marquette history and blocks behind Jim McElvey. See more high ball screens for Carton, trying to just get him loose and get him downhill. John dropping it off for Garcia, cutting to the rim. And another great pass from John. And times when that other big man dives, you can get great looks if the post is a willing passer. Champagny, leaner, yes, rattles down. So I just think Champagny's got an advantage with Garcia guarding him, just from the standpoint of his mobility. You can run him off screens, you can beat him off the bounce. Got to resist the temptation to stand and settle for catch and shoot jump shots if you're Champagny with Garcia guarding you. Champagny who scored over 12 in every game. He and his brother Justin at Pittsburgh, his twin brother, two of the most talented scorers in all of college basketball, both averaging right around 20 a game. Down inside, McEwen using that pivot foot again, but had nowhere to go. Shot clock at two, leaner, in and out. Dunn pushes. Down the lane with a right hand, no. Now DJ Carton, as we are inside of three minutes remaining here in the first half. Carton opened the corner, came, but a blocking foul first. We got a media timeout. Well, Julian Champagny is a handful because he can shoot it, and you got to crowd him off the line. But that's when that mid-range floater comes into play. All right, Rob, 2.33 until that break. St. John's double-digit lead. Mark had the last two games, both losses against DePaul and Providence. More turnovers than field goals in the first half. They've been better in that department here this afternoon, Nick, but still down by 10. Yeah, taking care of the ball was going to be the number one priority for, for Marquette. So far, so good in that department. And Steve Wojciechowski told us today, when you're playing St. John's, you're going to have turnovers. But what you can't afford is those unforced turnovers. And I think for the most part, Marquette's done a nice job in that area. Really, the difference in this game has been St. John's three-point shooting. I and mean, they've really done a nice job knocking down perimeter jump shots. But you feel like Marquette has started to turn the tide a little bit, cutting that 15-point lead to 10. And this guy at the line... No points, 0 of 4 from the floor, the sophomore Ohio State transfer, who, as you said, they're looking for a full 40 minutes from. Steve Wojciechowski said at the end of games, I like what he said. He said he's given us a real verb. I haven't heard the word verb since verb <laughs> pipe with a soft freshman. But he's got to pick it up for the full 40. He can be so explosive out there. When I'm watching film at the end of games, whether it's the Paul game or the Providence game, all of a sudden, Carton's like this new guy at the end of the games. I'm like, where has this guy been the whole game? He's getting downhill. He's aggressive. And Carton's, I think, got a scoring mentality, but he's trying to balance running the team with also scoring the ball. Bucket on uh, the answer of the free throws by Julian Champetti. I mean, Carton, former five-star, went to Ohio State, but had the offer from Marquette. In fact, he came here when he was 15 to the Marquette team camp, and Steve Wojciechowski told him, everyone in the country is going to want you by the time you're done with high school, and they did. He chose Ohio State. Things didn't work out, and then Steve Wojciechowski gets him on round two. As Garcia misses inside, Theo John just wreaking havoc underneath the hoop. I just think those two guys, Garcia and John, you, you just look at these two teams. St. John's is the more slender, athletic, fast team. But what St. John, or what Marquette can counter that with is beef inside with Garcia and Theo John beating them up in the paint, owning the glass, posting up. That's one thing I've liked so far from this game is Theo John's had his fingerprints all over this thing, and Garcia got off to the hot start as well. Now 10 points, 6 rebounds. We talked about the block shot earlier as well. 
Uh, to pay off your point, though, about D.J. Carton, there's no question that he's got to get rolling for Marquette to maximize. And you've seen as this first half has progressed, they're starting to set more high on-ball screens for Carton just to get him loose and get him downhill to create opportunities for himself and the other Golden Eagles. So you can tell there's a concerted effort from a schematic standpoint to manufacture aggression from Carton. Off the mark in the corner for Moore. Weak side rebound, Elliott. I know Moore knocked one down a couple of minutes ago, but he's not a three-point shooter. He's got to resist that temptation. And there's a travel, so that's the fifth Marquette turnover. And that's been part of the thing for Mike Anderson during this run is he says shot selection has been better, but a guy like Isaiah Moore, to your point, Nick, three of 17 from outside the arc coming into this game. And sometimes guys like that, them making one, <laughs> it's, it's a good and bad thing because all of a sudden they think, okay, I'm going to start filling it up here. I'm going to be Steph Curry here this afternoon. <laughs> the reality is that's not where his bread is buttered. Not saying he can't be aggressive, but make sure you're taking the right ones. Driving baseline, Champagny. Offensive rebound following up his own miss. What a play from Champagny. Sticking with it, high pointing that rebound, not bringing it down, getting it right up off the glass. And what I like about Champagny is he can get you 20 a game, and you really don't have to run too many sets for him. He just can score within the natural framework of the game. He's already got 12 and 6. <laughs> Garcia does the exact same thing on the other end. Keep in mind as you watch Garcia, Champagny, Alexander, these are freshmen and sophomore, young players that are so good and going to be great in this league. They are already great. Yeah, the future is bright with the youngsters in the Big East. Here's Posh Alexander, one of those bright youngsters, the freshman from Brooklyn. Over on the wing, another one drops. Champagny is catching fire. He's got 15. And that's where being 6-8 matters, where you can catch and score. And then they throw it right to Alexander. He scores and it's fouled. What an end to the half for St. John's. Well, what did Steve Wojciechowski tell us? It's, you can live with turnovers. You can't live with the unforced turnovers. And that right there would fall under that category. Just an errant inbounds pass. That would be really great pressure from Posh Alexander. It's just kind of right place, right time. Take another look at it. Just no communication. Wasn't looking. Goes off Carton. And Posh goes and finishes. And St. John's has matched their largest lead. They led 28 to 13 and now 46 to 31 with 7.6 remaining. They just scored six points in eight seconds. It's like Reggie Miller back <laughs> at Market Square Arena. DJ Carton, final seconds. Heaves it up and misses. 0 of 5 from the floor in the first half for DJ Carton and St. John's takes a 15-point advantage into the lockers. Well, what a finish to the half for St. John's. Champagny getting it rolling. That defense leading the offense. Heck of a job. Stay tuned. Jeep Grand Cherokee halftime report coming up from Los Angeles. Red Storm up 15. Back in Milwaukee, halftime, St. John's with a 15-point lead over the Marquette Golden Eagles. We are nice and warm inside Pfizer Forum. Brandon God and Nick By. promise we're smiling underneath these masks. And <laughs> St. John's certainly smiling. A great end of the first half, six points in the last eight seconds. They've won four of five, and they're carrying that over here today. Well, I think they've done a lot of good things defensively, really sunk their teeth into Marquette increasing the tempo of this game. And then the three-point shooting, I felt, was a really important barometer for St. John's. They got some open shots from beyond the arc. And really, in a lot of different ways, Brandon, that's the difference in the game. Marquette, one for nine from three, and St. John's, seven for 15. We have our first half stats sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee and also fast break points down at the bottom, 17 for St. John's, just six 
for the Marquette Golden Eagles. And St. John's, of course, led by the guy who's led them all year, Julian Champagny. Now, Champagny, I think, has an advantage with Garcia Gardner because of his mobility. And that mobility is on display. You see the drive in the mid-range, the pick and the pop, the floater off the bounce, finding that soft spot against the zone. A lot of these shots, Brandon, are off movement. And that's what Champagny has to do. He was outstanding in the first half. Time now for Above and Beyond, brought to you by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. Julian Champagny, he was really good last year. Nick, he's been sensational this year. When you increase your points per game average by 10 points in the Big East Conference, that's really impressive. He's by far the most improved player in the Big East Conference. And when you can shoot the ball the way he can, you got a chance to be an elite player. And that's what Champagny is becoming. And he's got the Red Storm up by 15. Matching their largest lead. Does Marquette have an answer? We'll see if Steve Wojciechowski gets his crew fired up here. He led Marquette with 11 in the first half. Garcia, Theo John with 10. Second straight game, by the way, that St. John's is led by 15 at half in DePaul on Wednesday. They led by 15 at intermission, put up 49 points in the first half, 46 in the first half here. I like the Marquette's tried to pound the ball inside, but this guy's got to get rolling. Carton's got to find a way to put his fingerprints on this thing offensively. In the first half, 0 for 5 from the floor. Far too important of a player for him to be 0 for in the scoring column. Yeah, you, know, you get the sense that Steve Wojciechowski may, I'm sure he had something to say for the entire team to light a fire, but he probably really wanted to light a fire under DJ Carton. Scoring droughts, they're combined six today, and normally these are their go-to guys. And you, you got to tip your cap, though, to St. John's. I mean, this is where they can be tough to deal with. Those guards, whether it's Dunn or Posh Alexander, got multiple guys that can make life tough on opposing backcourt players. And maybe this will get Carton into a rhythm of flow. Get him to the free throw line, see the ball go through the basket. Get his confidence up. He does have four. As Nick told you, all from the free throw line. Marquette within 13. Again, I, I think Champagny's movement off the ball, coming off screens, making Garcia run just like this is where he's going to find open looks. Champagny driving it on Garcia and a foul. And they're going to get Dawson Garcia, the freshman from Prior Lake, Minnesota. It's just a tough matchup, Brandon, for Garcia. I mean, Garcia is a McDonald's All-American, really talented player, but he's not accustomed to guarding guys 25 feet from the basket, running off screens, defending the bounce. You know, Champagny, again, he's got that combination of size, athleticism, and shooting that make him a handful. Pass deflected by John, and then taken away by Marquette. Up ahead, Garcia. Too much, but following up the miss, Jamal Kane. Those kind of effort plays are all got to go Marquette's way if they're going to get back into this game. Champagny just inside the arc. No. And a rebound comes down to Carton. He pushes. Down the center of the lane, right to the rim. There's the first field goal for DJ Carton. Great decision to push the gas and attack. You're going to have to pick and choose your times when you do that because you don't want to get caught in a track meet. But you're having a hard time in the half court. Great place to find rhythm is in the open floor. 6-0 run to open the second half. And a foul against Jamal Kane. Now look at Carton again. He asked Steve Wojciechowski about pushing it in the open floor, and he said, you got to pick and choose your times when the flow is right. Well, the flow is right there, and Carton gets all the way to the rim. Vince Cole had a great first half in double figures. Gives it off to Dunn. Dunn, one of the senior leaders. 17-footer, in and out. That was all made because Carton blew up the post up for Champagny. It made St. John's have to go to their second and third option and forced a tough shot. Good job by Carton. Can Marquette add on to this 6-0 run? Weak side rebound, Garcia. It's an 8-0 run. Boy, what a start 
to the second half for the Golden Eagles. You figured there'd be a flurry from Wojo's crew. And a timeout taken by Mike Anderson, Steve Wojciechowski, known for his energy, his effort, his intensity. Whatever he said in the locker room, it worked. Cherokee Jeep, there's only one. So the Golden Eagles back within seven. DJ Carton starting to show a little aggression, Nick. Well, keep an eye on him right here. He's going to get switched on to Champagne on an on-ball screen. And Brandon, when you're a guard, and you get a mismatch, you have to do your work early and not allow the ball to go to the post. So watch as Carton's going to work to front it, blow it up, and then it forces St. John's into a tough mid-range jump shot. That's a great job by Carton recognizing the mismatch and fronting the post. Good start. That's for sure for Marquette. Now can they keep this going? Mike Anderson, he took the timeout. St. John's winners at three straight. With that 15-point lead down to seven. So potentially have a clock issue. Yeah, the officials, Roger Ayers, John Gaffney, Tony Henderson, and they're going to have to go over and get this fixed as the clock did not start. With 17.44, at least for the moment, remaining in the second half. You know, you take a step back, though, both of these teams four and six. So, look, we're not trying to sell it like they're both 10 and 0, but you feel like you're in the middle of the Big East play. This is a pivotal game for both of these teams. Absolutely. I mean, the calendar is almost going to turn to February, and February is when you're going to start building confidence and momentum because that light at the end of the tunnel starts to become visible, and St. John's is starting to play their best basketball, and Marquette's trying to snap a two-game losing streak. Those losses to... DePaul and Providence for Marquette. And remember, these two teams met January 16th in Queens. And Marquette got the 73-71 victory, a game that went down to the wire. In fact, St. John's had a couple looks late, including a Champagne three at the buzzer that would not drop. Everybody chasing Villanova, even after that COVID pause, Jay Wright and company came out, and they remain undefeated at 6-0. I don't think people understand how hard it is to take a month off where guys are having to quarantine, you, you get out of shape, you lose your rhythm. I've been impressed with how Villanova has been able to hit the ground running off of that month-long pause. And boy, Villanova, you know, we, of course, seems like Gonzaga and Baylor attract a lot of a lot of headline, headlines, but I think Villanova is right there at the top with those two teams when they are clicking on all cylinders. They adjust the clock to 17:35 and eight to shoot. Posh Alexander will initiate. And he'll stop and pop at the top of the arc, and he knocks it down. Well, that's a part of his game that has really improved over the last month or so, knocking down perimeter jump shots. 8 of 16. Remember, St. John started 6 of 7. Then they cooled down. Theo John bearing the defender Dunn underneath the goal. They put Dunn. Out of bounds. He buried him so far in the post up. Now, Theo John has put on a clinic posting up with close proximity to the rim. Well, poor Dunn generously listed at 190 here where the basketball had no chance against Theo John. Tough off balance fadeaway shot. Cole can't connect, but cleaning it up more. Posh Alexander, use of the shot fake, no. Well, Marquette has really ratcheted it up defensively. St. John's quality of shot has dipped dramatically here when you compare it to the first half. Marquette has scored on five straight trips down the floor. Here's that little high ball screen, and Carton's got a two-way go. Good play. Kane in the corner. They call that Kane's corner. He loves to post up there, and we've got a five-point game. Excellent read from D.J. Carton as well. Through the hands, and a foul is called. And a little slow to get up, Jamal Kane, as he collided with Vince Cole. Boy, momentum is starting to shift in favor of the Golden Eagles. And if I'm Steve Ojahowski, I'm going right back to that same look. 
Try and get Carton a high on ball screen. Let him get loose and read and react to the defense. So now it's St. John's. They're on their heels a little bit. 13 to 3 run through the first four minutes of this second half. There's Carton driving to the rim. He's got that look in his eyes, a completely different player to start the second half. Well, and John set two screens, the on-ball screen, and then he sealed off the help right around the rim for Carton to go finish. Carton has six this half, eight on the game, and now McEwen leads the break. Euro step up and in. We've got a one-point game. Uh, Steve wojciechowski has got to be really proud of his team's response here in the first four and a half minutes. Remember, it was 46-31 at intermission. Adai Wusu driving to the bucket. There's his first points of the afternoon, and St. John's needed them badly. Wusu, Adai Wusu, not a great three-point shooter. You need to back off him a little bit, play him more as a driver. Now it looks like St. John's maybe going a little bit of their matchup zone, which I think is a smart move for Mike Anderson. You're having a hard time keeping Carton out of the lane. Marquette has scored eight straight times down the floor. Correction, Marquette has scored nine straight times down the floor. This time it's Kane, and we're tied at 51. Now St. John's has lost all of their pop defensively. They don't, they're not flying around like they were in the first half. Put on the line, short, long rebound. A Daiwusu, but he loses it out of bounds. And all of a sudden, we have a completely different basketball game. St. John's was down 15 and half, and now we're all tied at 51. Marquette has battled back to even things up. Marquette outscoring St. John's 20 to five in the second half to tie things up. Millions of kids nationwide without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Just text play to the number on your screen to help kids in the game. Well, Brandon, Theo John's done a nice job setting these high on-ball screens, but watch as he rolls. He's going to set another screen down at the bottom by the rim. This is great feel and vision from John. So watch as he's going to roll. Carton's going to take it down the left lane line. So he sets that screen right there. So he's going to free up some space for Carton to go finish at the rim. Great feel from Theo John to get his little guy loose. So second half, as you see John with 12 points, but Marquette collectively in the second half, 8 of 10. St. John's 2 of 8. And also turnovers this half, Nick. St. John's 4, Marquette 0. This game is totally flipped. And now it's on St. John's to answer. Carton finding Kane. Again, that's his spot, but he misses. And the rebound comes down to Erlington. Adai Wusu with a full head of steam, and he bumps into McEwen, and they'll get McEwen with a personal. This is where if you're St. John's, you cannot forget who your star is, and that's Julian Champagny. You can't sacrifice movement and get stagnant to isolate him. But if you're St. John's, you got to headhunt him, free him up. And if you're Champagne, you got to be ready to move and get loose for some easy jump shots. I felt like, a, as a player, when you hit adversity on the road, go to your superstar. Champagne was 6 of 11 in the first half, 0 of 1 so far in the second. Rasheem Dunn. Drive it on the taller Garcia, slips it into Posh Alexander. Beautiful dime. Marquette just wasn't matched up right that entire possession, and Dunn took advantage of the mismatch, drawing help, beating Garcia off the bounce. St. John's gets the lead back. B.J. Carton probing inside, had it stripped. Posh Alexander, he's the one that knocked it free. And we'll have a jump ball. And Brandon, Marquette just wasn't matched up right, where Garcia ended up on Rasheen Dunn, and Dunn recognized it, 
and put him in the blender. And watch out, Posh Alexander, littlest guy on the floor, has a great knack to find increases and openings around the rim and finishes. But that's as simple as getting matched up correctly on a baseline out of bounds if you're Marquette. And those two guys, Dunn and Alexander, Dunn the senior, Alexander the freshman, but really good friends they become. And Dunn has influenced Alexander a great deal. And here it's Alexander getting another steal up ahead to Dunn. And Dunn finishes with the foul. So the young buck and the old buck connecting for two more. Well, throw it in that coffin corner, and Theo John gets double teamed and turns it over. And St. John's will turn that into points immediately. And a good hard finish as Kobe McEwen was going for the block, but done with good strength to finish through the contact. But that's how fast it can happen. Defense to offense for the Red Storm. Rasheem Dunn, Mike Anderson said he's the top leader on this team and Posh Alexander wouldn't be as good as he is right now without the leadership and guidance of Dunn and then they connected on those last two plays to give St. John's a five-point lead. Contested three, a little strong. The outside shooting has been a bit of an issue as it continues to be the last seven games now for Marquette. Alexander driving off balance. Tap back. No, second time no. And John strong with a rebound. Your ball's got to get to Cartney. You got to let him continue to be aggressive. Here he is, splits the defenders, blocking foul. But that's that aggressive nature. They're a different team when DJ Carton has his foot on the gas. And in this second half, as much as the defense has changed, he's changed. He's looking to attack. And it doesn't necessarily have to mean it ends in him shooting. He'll make the right play when it presents himself. But he cannot afford to be passive for his teammates. As a freshman at Ohio State, 10 points a game, three assists a game. This year, over 12 a contest and 3.6 assists, assists per game for the native from Bettendorf, Iowa, which is right on the Iowa-Illinois border. He's a talented player. I mean, you can see it. But it's challenging because you know, he's a point guard, but he's a scoring point guard. And I think at times he gets caught in between trying to run the team and be aggressive for his own offense. Backdoor pass, and then the extra pass to Adai Wusu. He attacks, but got rejected by the rim, but it falls right back down to him. Boy, Adai Wusu, he may be a freshman, but he's got an upperclassman body, and that was an aggressive attack of the 10. They've got a couple of guys with football bodies who were good football players in high school, Adai Wusu and Erlington, the other. And Erlington was a defensive lineman. And a very good one. Theo John going to that right-hand hook off the mark. There's Erlington. Champagne's been quiet in this half. Here he is. Well, right on cue. Don't you love it when all the stars align for you, Nick? But it came off a simple pin down screen. Again, he is so much better served with his matchup moving and coming off screens off the ball. Pretty easy. So it's now a 10-2 run for St. John's after Marquette had tied it at 51. John backing down Champagny. And the bench wanted a foul. They didn't get the whistle. Good job contesting without fouling by St. John's at the rim. Vince Cole back to Alexander. Long rebound comes into the hands of D.J. Carton. Boy, Posh Alexander's all over the ball. Look at this guy. How can you not love to watch him play? Mike Anderson said he leaves everything on the floor, every game, every practice. He only knows one speed, and it's full speed. Carton, boy, a teardrop, but too many tears way over the top. <laughs> And it'll go back to St. John's media timeout. Well, it was on St. John's to answer. And how about Dylan Adaiwusu with the hard attack? Couldn't get the first one to go down, but picks up the loose change. And Julian Champagny 
That's too much space for the Big East leading scorer. Super Bowl 55, your chance to win $250,000 of Terry Bradshaw's money with the Fox Super 6 app. It's easy. Just download the app, pick six Super Bowl 55 outcomes by Sunday, February 7th for your shot to win. It's free to play. Don't miss out. Play now. Julian Champagny, leading scorer in the Big East, and he has led St. John's today out to this eight-point lead. And don't forget about his brother, Justin, at Pittsburgh. He's pretty good, too. In fact, he leads the ACC in scoring at 20.1 a game, and they've got athletic bloodlines, that's for sure, because their father was a soccer star at St. John's. Ranford, who played there in the 90s and helped lead them to a 1996 national championship. And Nick Julian actually went to St. John's soccer camps until he was 13 years old. He was a good soccer player himself, but I think things have worked out okay on the basketball <laughs> floor. the right sport, no doubt about it. That's pretty amazing. And the Champ Pennies, that's, uh, that's quite the family. Uh, it's been something, you know, they thought that they might play together in college, but ultimately decided to go separate ways. They're very close still. They talk every day, and they're kind of happy with their separate paths, get a little separation, but still staying close as brothers. Turnover there from Adai Wusu. Well, Marquette had a flurry. St. John's had a response. Now it's Marquette's turn, and I think these high on-ball screens have served Marquette well, but... Kobe McEwen wasn't quite set, but you know what that's on? The on-ball pressure from Posh Alexander. Sometimes when you get sped up, you want to get to that on-ball screen to get the guy off you too early. And that can, that can be attributed to Posh Alexander, that turnover. Five fouls on Marquette now, three on St. John's here as we hit the 10-minute mark of the second half. Vince Cole, spin cycle. Rebound, Garcia had it, but Cole took it away. Great pass, a Daiwusu to Erlington. And my mistake, I figured anybody that forced a turnover, it had to be Posh Alexander, he's having it on the floor right now. He's got multiple Red Storm backcourt defenders that can make life difficult, but how about that feel from a Daiwusu on the drop down? Well, those are the two guys we were playing. They're saying we're great football players in high school connecting. And there's Champagny picks up the foul against Garcia. Adai Wusu, 6'4", 235. Erlington, 6'6", 240. And I don't know what position they could have played. You know, you said Erlington was a great defensive lineman at tight end. But I think these guys would be good fullbacks, good linebackers, tight ends, wherever you want to slot them. Yeah, their athleticism is impressive. And they got those big bodies. But something I think is underrated with Mike Anderson's teams is the way they share the ball. You know, we, we think of them defense first and turnovers, and, and rightfully so. But Mike Anderson's teams really, really pass the ball well collectively. And against DePaul, he was really pleased with how they shared the ball. Over 20 assists on 30 made field goals. And we talked about the defense spurring this surge of winning four of their last five, but he also said sharing the basketball has been a big part in that as well. He said something interesting in our conversation with him that when he recruits, he's looking for offensive feel. Because if you have offensive feel, typically you have defensive feel as well. And I think you can see that with this team. They're really good defensively, but they all got pretty high, key, high IQs offensively as well. This is one of the highest IQs done, and just as I say that, the pass of the turnover. Try to get it down inside of Theo John, but they can't. Greg Elliott goes barreling into the chest of Burlington, and it will be a travel. That, that whole possession went south when you turned down John, who was open in the post. And he had a, he had Erlington buried. You turned him down, got a little bit out of sorts, and it turns out being a travel. 12 points for John, but pretty quiet in the second half. There he got a hand on it and comes up with a steal. DJ Cart. Started that run that was 20-5 to earlier in the half that tied the game. 
Foul away from the ball with 824 remaining. Well, that's also what that high on-ball screen does. It's not just to get Carton loose. It's to loosen up Theo John's defender so that he can roll down and post him up. And John was able to draw a foul, but it all started with that high on-ball screen. Four players in double figures for Marquette, all between 10 and 14 points. Very balanced. Carton in the lane, little floater, nothing but nylon. Just great touch and feel, getting in the middle of that zone, hitting that floater. He's just been way more aggressive in this second stanza. He's got a dozen right around his season average. Marcellus Erlington, offensive foul. And it will belong to Marquette. When we get back to five serve form, we're getting down to the good stuff. A Big East battle on Sunday in Milwaukee. Our game summary, sponsored by Progressive, gets slam dunk savings today. St. John's 50% from deep, Marquette 3 of 14. That's one reason that the Golden Eagles are down seven. But again, twice in this game, Nick, they've been down 15 points. Yeah, Marquette has gotten put on the ropes numerous times, but they've battled back. And the free throw line's been a big part of their ability to put points on the board. And a lot of that is with Theo John and Darson Garcia doing a good job of making life tough in the paint for anybody that comes near the rim. I also think D.J. Carton has increased his aggressiveness, which has given Marquette a different dimension offensively. But the guy that's been quiet in the second half is Julian Champagny. He had 15 points in the first half. He's only got three in this second half. You know Champagny's going to go down gunning. Free throws, that's a good point, though. 18 attempts for Marquette, 15 makes. St. John's just 4-4 four four at the line. Just haven't gotten there. And Mike Anderson's done a nice job of switching up defenses, playing some man-to-man, -man, mixing in some kind of 2-3 matchup zone as Marquette did find a rhythm early in this second half, but that guy right there has pressed a lot of the right buttons to try and disjoint that rhythm. Trying to get it down to Garcia, they do. The freshman has 14, and he has it swatted. Great defense by Josh Roberts. Now Alexander missing at the rim. DJ Carton, three on two. Dribbled out of bounds off of Elliott. Well, you've got to convert when you've got a three on two like that. And I thought Carton went to the wrong spot at Garcia. Screaming at the rim and instead chose Elliott in the corner. Those are the little decisions that add up in a game like this. And a frustrated Greg Elliott goes to the bench. St. John's only loss in their last five games was to Marquette at Carnesecca in Queen 73-71 on January 16th. Trying to avenge that loss here. Top of the arc, Rasheem Dunn driving on Garcia. Backs him up. Beautiful. And great recognition. Set an on-ball screen with Champagny. You got the switch. You pick the matchup you like, and Dunn attacks Garcia off the bounce. In some trouble. McEwen needs some help. And they do get it across. Garcia finding the range, just the fourth three-pointer for Marquette this afternoon. I like that Carton looked to attack off of breaking the press. Garcia with 17 to lead Marquette as they again try to claw back into this thing. Now St. John's man-to-man, -man. go back to this high on-ball screen potentially. Cross-court skip, right into the shooting pocket of Carton, but he missed it. Weak side rebound, Cole. Great look. You know, Carton only 30% this year from three. At Ohio State last year, he was above 40%. Steve Wojciechowski says he knows that he can shoot it better. As Theo John gets another rejection at the rim, but Marquette was out of bounds. Well, I think one of the reasons for Carton's dip in percentages there aren't a lot of other guys on the team that can create a shot for him that was one of the few instances in which he got a rhythm kick out three on the skip pass 
I think oftentimes when you're having to take three-point jump shots off the bounce and create your own threes, it can be challenging to shoot a high percentage unless you're Marcus Howard or someone like that. <laughs> yeah, Marcus Howard, who obviously no longer with the team. He scored over 2,700 points in his Marquette career. He didn't get that final chance at the NCAA tournament, though, unfortunately. Foul here with 541 remaining. Good job by Julian Champagny, and there's been a couple of times off of base on out of bounds. Marquette's gotten caught in some tough matchups. That was just a simple little pop out to the corner, and Champagny has been able to catch, rip, and drive and get to the line. It is such a different Marquette team, though, Nick, obviously without Marcus Howard. You look this year at the leading scores, you got three guys between 12 and 13 a game. Last year it was Howard above 20, and then this huge drop. Yeah, it was, it was difficult because obviously you were best served to exhaust all options to do everything to get Marcus Howard a jump shot last season, but sometimes that comes at the expense of developing some other guys. And this season they've had to adjust to life without Marcus Howard. And it's a pretty comforting feeling when you can pencil in 25 every single game, and that's what the world was for Marquette basketball with Marcus Howard. They don't have him anymore. Steve Wojciechowski looking for answers as he takes the timeout with 5.31 remaining. Ten teams in the field, according to our own Mike DeCourcy, the Big Ten Conference has been tremendous. The Big East with two teams right here that need to prove a little more as we get toward the second half of the season. St. John's has been on a run winning three straight. Two straight losses though for Marquette. And down eight. Roberts got a little too handsy battling Theo John in the post. And if Theo John's physicality has been a, a big part of this game, drawing fouls and making life tough, just constantly posting up and putting pressure on the Red Storm's frontline defenders. So we'll have free throws the rest of the way. That's seven fouls on St. John's, and the next foul against Marquette will put the Red Storm at the line as well. And keep in mind, Theo John... Got a bum knee. He turned his ankle at the start of this game. This guy has been a warrior here this afternoon. Last year, Nick, he played with a right wrist injury the entire season. They said, do you want a red shirt? He said, no, I want to play through it and have surgery at the end of the year. So he ended up starting 29 to 31 and then had that wrist surgery in May. I always feel like, and I never want to draw a division between the fans and the players, but I think the biggest disconnect between fans and players is injuries and having to play through them. I you assume everybody out there on the floor right now is feeling great, and the reality is when you get to this time of the season, everybody's got those nagging injuries, but you got to be tough and fight through it. And Theo John, by the way, with those free throws, ties his career high 14 points. Here's Dunn, offensive. And Dunn must have got a chicken wing out there and hooked Kobe McEwen as he was driving him to the basket. Take another look at it. Watch the left arm as he's going to pivot around, kind of hooks McEwen. The officials had a good angle on it, and they blew the whistle. That's what it feels like the last couple years they're really trying to clean up. And, you know, McEwen did a good job, had his hands to the sky, so it made it more obvious when that hook came. Marquette's only lead in this game was 5-3. to three. Remember, they tied it at 51 with a strong start to the second half. Shot clock at 3. John, new career high, 16 points for the senior from Minneapolis. Great catch in traffic. And to be able to turn and maintain balance and not barrel into the Red Storm help defenders, really great display of agility from the big man Theo John. Turned into a good one as we approach the four-minute mark. Cole had it stripped. Taken away by Jamal Kane. DJ Carton. Garcia down into John. Defense collapses. He's got Carton. Kicks it out. Corner three. McEwen. Yes! One-point game. It all starts with getting the switch and John posting up. That draws help that gets everybody scrambling and it ends up in an open three. Great job by Theo John posting hard and being a willing passer. 
7-0 run as we hit our final media timeout. Well, what a great finish we have brewing in Milwaukee. How about the finish in traffic from Theo John not getting caught with the charge and the little flip pass to Kobe McEwen. Don't go anywhere. We got a good finish. Well, this week, Coaches versus Cancer, Suits and Sneakers Week, bringing attention to the mission of Coaches versus Cancer and the American Cancer Society. Coaches wearing special sneakers with their game attire, as well as branded face masks. For more info or to donate, go to cancer.org or suitsandsneakers.org. We've got a good one brewing. Marquette back with it a point, Nick. They've just continued to fight. Last couple of possessions, good attack off of breaking the press. Garcia gets a three. Good job by John to not lose his balance in traffic and finish. And then Kobe McEwen buries the corner triple. Steve Wojciechowski's got to be really proud of how his guys have continued to battle back and fight. Down 15 at intermission. 67-66. Again, 73-71 was the final when these two teams met up in Queens. Marquette getting the victory. This guy at the line, Champagny, had a look at the end of that game, but missed it, and Marquette escaped. And I think for St. John's offensively, you've got to have a steady diet of Champagny's movement, movement without the ball, whether it's ball screens, pin downs. I think he'll manufacture opportunities for himself and others. And then defensively for St. John's, you've got to figure out what you're doing with these high on-ball screens and when the ball goes into the post. If I'm the Red Storm, Got to force Marquette to knock down some threes. I'd come with a hard collapse. Marquette has hit a couple of threes as of late. But they started three of 15. Backdoor line, two-handed jam, Jamal Kane. Boy, you fish and miss. You go for a steal. You get out of position. Good back screen. Good execution in a big spot for Marquette. Inside of three minutes. See Jamal Keynes chasing Champagny around, much more athletic. Matchup. Likes to get to that elbow, but that time off the mark. Marquette's last lead, 5-3. to three. Go Back to that same look with the back pick. Stop and pop. Off the mark. Knocked out of bounds. Marquette Bench wanted it to stay here, but they say St. John's basketball. Well, how about this execution, Brandon, from Marquette? With a back screen, see if Theo John get a piece of a Daiwusu, and Jamal Kane goes upstairs. Great lob pass from Kobe McEwen. Senior to senior, two of the veterans for Steve Wojciechowski. Trying to post up Champagny. Kane, I like the switch up and having Kane chase Champagny around from Steve Ojahowski. But Daiwusu lost his feet, no travel call. Shot clock, down at five. Done, mid-range, no. Pops in the air, it comes down to Kane. And I think the adjustment of putting Kane on Champagny is a big move from Steve Ojahowski. They're able to fight through those screens off the ball a little bit better. Taken away by Alexander. He stripped it. And he scores it on the other end. The freshman making a huge play with 90 seconds to go. How about Posh Alexander? Leads the Big East in steals. Gets a big steal and a big spot for his team. Six steals in this game now for the Big East leader. You cannot be weak with the ball when Posh Alexander is near you. Driving down the lane. And a foul at the rim as McEwen attacks. But Posh Alexander, I mean, he's really a big storyline in this ball game, Nick. But look, you're a little bit weak with it. Great hands and anticipation. And he's good at going and making you pay and finishing. Just great hands. He picks and chooses his time to poke at the ball. And when he does, he typically gets a lot of basketball. What a play from Posh Alexander. Think about opposing coaches saying, this guy's only a freshman. I mean, they're going to have to face him for three more years after this. Now 49 steals on the season. And what, what a perfect fit for what Mike Anderson wants to do. Posh <laughs> Alexander setting the tone on that point guard defensively. 
And they're going to the monitor to see who that foul was on. That's the reason for the pause. Nick and I up in the stands away from the court, so we don't have the usual access to talk to our game officials, Roger Ayers, John Gaffney, and Tony Henderson. I think they're trying to make sure that it was, I think Roberts was in the area, and that would be number five on Josh Roberts. And he's another guy who, although he doesn't fill it up in the points category, just four for Roberts, an excellent defender, and he'll take a seat. See Roberts coming with the block. Him and Champagny both in the area. The foul goes on Roberts, and that'll do it for Josh Roberts' day. Couple of blocks, four points, 17 minutes, and frustrated. First one off the bounce, good for McEwen. 106 to go. Marquette down two. And back down to one. Well, now with Roberts off the floor, you get Erlington on the floor, who's a more capable perimeter shooter, so should be more space in the interior because Roberts is not on the floor. Bosch Alexander. Now with Dai Wusu. Here's the go-to guy, the Big East leading score, but he gives it up. A Daiwusu down the lane, how did he get that to go? Wow, what an athletic finish from Dylan Adaiwusu. Not settling for the jump shot, instead he drives. Not known for his offense, six points a game, but a very athletic finish to put St. John's back up three. I thought Champagny was gonna force the step back but good poise at the end of the clock to kick out, and Garcia not accustomed to closing out on the perimeter, and a Wusu with an amazing finish right at the rim. John is coming, takes it right at him, and gets it off the window. That's a big-time finish. How about these freshmen for St. John's? Two big plays, former high school teammates in Wusu and Posh Alexander. And they're coming up big here on the road for St. John's. A uh, glimpse at the future, and remember, this is very similar to the score that we had on January 16th. Last meeting in Queens. Toby McEwen's layup put Marquette ahead with 27 seconds remaining. The Theo John with a big block in the final seconds. Champigny got a look in the corner, but it was off the mark, and the Golden Eagles held on to beat St. John's 73 to 71. And now we sit at 73 to 70 with 42.9 remaining. Champagny's been the guy. Alexander, 15 points, a young career high, six steals, and Garcia leading a very balanced Marquette effort. Well, and if you're Marquette right now, there's a lot of game left. I mean, you've got 43 seconds left. You don't need to come down and hoist a quick triple. I think you can continue to attack the rim, extend this game. And if you're St. John's, you've had issues keeping Carton out of the lane with the high ball screens and dealing with post-ups. Well, a zone can remedy both those things. It's harder to get conventional post-ups when you're sitting in a zone and you're not having to deal with some high on-ball screens. So it'll be interesting to see if Mike Anderson wants to go to his 2-3 matchup zone one time against Marquette here in a big spot. And on the other side, what's going on in Steve Wojciechowski's brain right now, Nick? Well, DJ Carton, this is usually when they just get it to him and let him go to work. And the reality is you saw the flashback. Kobe McEwen made the go-ahead basket, so you do have other options, but I think the primary option is to get Carton a high ball screen and let him get loose and make the decision. Game reset, arrow with St. John's, two timeouts for the Red Storm, one for the Golden Eagles. First, they got to get it in. Ooh, that was close to a five-second call. Kobe McEwen handing it off, but Posh Alexander pressuring. Like St. John's is man to man. Carton up top, Garcia puts it on the deck. Off balance, fouled, and it does not go. He will have two at the line. At six foot 11, that's pretty athletic right there to be able to catch, shot fake, jab, and get in the lane and draw a foul. I thought Garcia was maybe gonna catch and shoot. 
But I don't mind the decision to get to the free throw line. The crown jewel of the freshman class for Steve Wojciechowski, the McDonald's All-American, just like his coach was back in 1994 before going to Duke. Big free throws here. Hits the first. This is the second. John thought he had it. Now they might go look at this. Yes, they will. John thinks that St. John's hit it last. Theo John has just been so active. Owning the lane, owning the glass. I see a big call here. Now this is the review of the game, no doubt. Uh, I think that went off of Theo John, don't I you? Too. I looked like Champagny hit it, and then it hit Theo John's hand. But, man, that is a tough one. This will be a good angle at it. Yeah. I think the last touch is Theo John. And, again, it's always important what the call on the floor is in these spots, too. The call on the floor was St. John's basketball. And is there enough indisputable video evidence to overturn this to Marquette basketball? I don't see it. Let's assume it's St. John's ball. One more look. Champagny, he did touch it, but John hit it last. I think, he, I think is the last to touch it. Yeah, so let's assume it's St. John's ball. Marquette's down two. Do you foul right away, or do you wait till St. John's gets it across half court? Well, I, I would make St. John's, I'd put him in one one trap. I think he got about five or six, seven seconds to play with a little bit here. Because sometimes guys like to catch it and curl over the ball because they think a foul's coming. I think you can put him in a trap, make him make a decision or two, but obviously, you don't have all the time in the world. But I'm always a fan of, of make guys make decisions under pressure in big spots. If I'm Marquette, I come with one trap, force them to throw it out of it, and then you got to foul. The good news for Marquette, when you do foul, that's 18 fouls. So it is a one and one for St. John's and not double bonus. Uh, they're taking a longer look at this than I thought they would. I thought it was pretty clear that it was off of Theo John. But it was bang, bang. We'll see what it is. It'll stay St. John's basketball. As we assume, so. And these are the spots you would you would assume that St. John's gets a lot of work in practice dealing with pressure. <laughs> so they should be pretty comfortable handling Marquette's full court pressure. We'll see if Marquette, they go with their defensive lineman. Up, bring up Saimir Torrance, who's an excellent defensive player. They'll switch all these screens. Communication at a premium here. If you're Marquette, going to talk early. See, they're already pointing at each other. Switching who's going on to who. The Daiwusu will be the inbounder, the freshman. Gets it into Dunn. And there's the foul right away from Torrance. So Rasheed Dunn, redshirt senior. But he has struggled some at the line. Coming into today, 20 of 30, 66%. Again, it's a huge difference mentally when it's one and one and not two shots. Puts a little bit more pressure on you on that first shot from a player's perspective at the line. Returning score from a year ago. His role, not as many points, more assists this year for the senior from Brooklyn. One and one. And he knocks it down. The first guy that Mike Anderson told us about when we asked, who are your leaders? It was Rasheem Dunn, and sometimes you like your leader at the line in these moments. No doubt about it. It's the big one, though, to make it a two-possession game. Cool, calm, and collective. He knocks them both down, and now Marquette needs a bucket in a hurry. It doesn't have to be a three, but you got to go pretty quick. DJ Carton. Down the lane, floats it up. No, tap back, yes, Garcia. Back to two with 12.8 remaining. A game-saving bucket by Dawson Garcia. First of all, DJ Carter did a good job stopping and going straight up and down. St. John's was set to take a charge, goes straight up. And then Garcia and John have just owned the paint and owned the glass. Little tip in to keep hope alive for Marquette. So same order of business here. Now you don't have a lot of time to work with. You do got a foul right away, just like 
Marquette did a second ago. And you can you got to make this inbounds pass a little bit more difficult if you're Marquette. Dunn caught that way too easy. Remember at intermission, it was a 15-point game. And then Marquette, they woke up, and the second half's been a different story. Well, the energy has gone in favor of the Golden Eagles from the second stanza on. Really came out and set the tone, attacking the basket. DJ Carton got more aggressive. Dawson Garcia and Theo John own the paint, own the glass. And those threes start falling a little bit more comfort when you're doing damage inside. Been an impressive level of fight from Marquette, but the fight isn't over for the Golden Eagles. St. John's trying to get it in, having some trouble. They do have two timeouts. They want to travel. They're going to get a travel. Off the catch is Champagny, and Marquette has it back. It looked like it was the right call. John Gaffney was right on it. Looked like Champagny took too many steps. Take another look at it. I thought Dunn was open instead. It's hard if you're Champagny. One, two, three, four steps. Right on it, and a travel. Here we go. This is probably... Cole McEwen or DJ Carton looking to attack. Marquette has no timeouts. Here is Kobe McEwen. Driving inside. Missed it. Knocked out of bounds. Stays here with 3.2 remaining. A pretty good look for McEwen, but you got to erase it from the memory books and execute here. Marquette does not have a timeout, so they got to adjust on the fly here. See if they'll look at this to see if it was for sure out. And this is, uh, I think, a good and a bad thing. I think there's a chance this is off Dawson Garcia, but if it's not, it gives Steve Wojciechowski a chance to draw something up. Yeah, a lot of folks in college basketball don't like the review here for that reason that you mentioned. As we get another look at it, oh, that's so tough to tell. Again, the call on the floor is huge here. It was Marquette ball. Yep. I just think there's too many hands in that area to be able to differentiate who it went off of last. And... That's tough. That, that is really that tough. That is so tough. You want to talk about hands in the cookie jar. There were five of them. And they're going to keep it with Marquette. You got plenty of time here. Watch a handoff with Carton and Theo John. And Theo John could fake the handoff and turn and go finish. And now Mike Anderson getting told to back up. But when Carton throws it in, they usually like to hand it to him. Carton initiates. Has to get it in, and Dunn gets his hands on it and steals it. And they're going to call a tie-up. The arrow is with St. John's. Marquette did not have a timeout. Carton threw it in before a five-second violation and turned it over. What a play from Dunn. Incredible. And that might have been a travel. Now they're going to call a timeout St. John's. Marquette's bench was saying that Adai Wusu's feet were not set, but they will not get that call. What a finish. Boy, what a play for Machine Dunn. Try to set a little back pick to get Theo John loose. St. John's handles that, and then Dunn does the rest, denying the inbounds pass. Yeah, this turnover is certainly the biggest one of the game. These St. John's Red Storm backcourt guys are some tough cookies that make everything hard. And if you're St. John's, you just throw this ball towards your basket. You just you can't get a dead ball turnover. Marquette would love to foul before the ball even gets in if they could. Adai Wusu, he's got it. And wide open is Alexander. They dribbled out the final four tenths, and St. John's escapes. 75-73, and their winning ways continue. That's now four in a row and five of the last six for the Red Storm. On the road, St. John's controlled this game wire to wire, and the Red Storm are playing some of their best basketball of the season, and it's a good mix of old and young. Rasheen Dunn doing a nice job in a variety of areas. The senior, but then Champagny Alexander and Adai Wusu Pretty good young trio of players for Mike Anderson. What a battle in the 39th meeting between these two teams. The 38th meeting in Queens was a two-point game in favor of Marquette. St. John's gets revenge. They come on the road and win by two in Milwaukee.
That'll do it. Thanks for watching. For Nick Ba, Carol Langley, our producer, Renardo Lowe, our director, I'm Brandon Gaud. Stay tuned for Inside the Big East. That's coming up next right after these messages. St. John's, four straight wins. This one, 75-73 the final.